Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Tech Talk series. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Jeremy. Um, I'm organizing these. And today we have a talk with Nick Sullivan. Who is, where did Nick go? Hello! Tech Talk starting! Whenever we find Nick. Uh, while, while we're waiting, uh, if you have ideas for a tech talk, either that you'd like someone to give or that you'd like to give, uh, come to me. The next tech talk will be uh, on the fifth. It will be it will be on secrets management and by Mr. Kroll, who is carefully not looking at me as I remember to mention his name. He's smarter than I. Okay, seriously, has anyone seen Nick? He was here five minutes. He was here five minutes ago. Oh, there he is. I was doing one of those skits, like from a talk show where the, the guy runs from outside. I'm here, so. Um, hello, everybody. This is, I guess, our first tech talk in San Francisco. So, uh, big thanks to Jeremy for organizing this. And uh, hopefully we can, we can live up to what the London team has been doing. They've had some pretty good tech talks. So this is the first one. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about PKI and TLS. This is, this is kind of an intro um, level, level thing about, uh, about this lock icon. So uh, this, this kind of sums up Iconogra iconogra iconographically what, what TLS SSL is, what, what we're talking about security. So um, to start, I asked a few people from the street what they thought the lock icon means in the browser. Hi, so who are you? And I'm Joe, or Joe Smith, from the UK, um, in Berlin, and I don't know, the padlock to me is, I don't know, Browsing, I guess. I'm not sure. It's a level of security, I guess, it signifies. I don't know. Uh, he's anxious about the point. Yeah, it, it, it's the most British <laughs> response ever that it. I mean, it's a sign that it's the same as privacy browsing, so that you don't have any cookies or other things saved. But I can't comment on what they are because I don't really know. True story. <laughs> So, yeah, private browsing, that's one sort of suggestion. What is this lock icon? Uh, and these are sort of average people. This is someone else. Hi, who are you? And uh, where are you from? My name is Stan from Canada. I live in Berlin. I get those with fingers of them. Um, back to the sure padlock the right question. <laughs> what is the padlock in a browser? What is a browser? I believe it, uh, I, I think, it's, uh, it tells you that uh, the website you're currently looking at has a certificate that assures that it's it's safe. Hurrah! Yeah. Hurrah! Yeah. And Hurrah! then sometimes, you know, you get a little warning like, oh, this this website doesn't have a certificate, so it doesn't have a little padlock or something. Hurrah! Do you notice when a website doesn't have a certificate? It pops up. What does it yeah. say when it pops up, and what do you do? I keep going because the porn is really good. <laughs> okay, so uh, that guy thinks that if there's no security on your website, then it'll pop up and warn you if the site doesn't have a certificate. But um, so for those of you who know, that's 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 not true. But these are kind of common misconceptions. Uh, people who work in the security industry, security space, tend to think that people know what all this stuff means. So this is the original lock icon. This is the original indication of security on websites from uh, Nets. So it's like it's kind of like a gun and a thing. It's it's actually a key that's split apart. Um, they updated it in Netscape Navigator 4, and this sort of was the beginning of this unlock lock situation. Um, and this is kind of what it looks like now. It's this nice green padlock. Uh, typically, you can, you can have a name beside it or not, depending on w what type of certificate you bought. But before we go in, the, in there, why? What, what is this lock? What does it mean? Why, why are we doing this? Um, and to motivate that a little bit, you can 
kind of think of what really happens when you visit a website. Um, your device sends this message, uh, which is HTTP, our favorite protocol, and it says, hey, get me this website, and the website says, okay, here it is. And all of this is sort of transferred from the device to the website and back. But um, if you really think of it, there are many, many, many hops along the way. And this is like your local router, your modem, your ISP, the internet exchange is sort of like the pipes of the internet, and it goes all the way to the origin. And um, there could be you know, some sort of malicious person with a knife there waiting to either to read your messages or to change them. And uh, this is just sort of plain text. It's just, this is what HTTP is. And if anybody at any one of these spots can read and change um, what's going through. So if it's a credit card or if it's anything even more sensitive, this is, we, we need to protect it. And this is how we do it, which is with cryptography. So um, messages are encrypted with a, what's called a symmetric key. Basically both sides have the same key and uh, you scramble the data with the key and it goes all the way through and it's kind of safe the whole way through. And then the other side gets, uh, uses the same key to unscramble it. And this is the basic concept of how encryption on the web works. Um, so you may ask how does the device and the website get the same key? And uh, this is done by sort of the magic of public key cryptography. There's this algorithm called Diffie-Hellman. Um, this is a key exchange algorithm. And uh, this is some, some math, but basically, um, and you can see Diffie staring from behind. I don't know if that's subtle enough for you guys. But, um, but yeah, basically you generate a parameter and, and exchange it with the other side. And, and because of the nature of mathematics and how we know how to factor numbers and how we know how to do mathematical computations, uh, anybody listening in between is not going to be able to find out what it is. So client, you take G, which is a, just a number, and you exponentiate it to A, which is your secret value, and on the other side it's G exponentiated to B. You kind of send that over, and you get G to the B A, G to the A B, and you end up with the same value. So anybody listening on between is not going to know either A or B, but um, both these parts are going to be able to get the same key. And this is this is typically how keys are exchanged between two parties on the internet. So, um, so cool. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I I've heard, it was it was a lot cooler when I first learned about it. So if this is your first time seeing Tiffy Hellman. Uh, yeah, magic, right? <laughs> so um, something that you learn in after learning Diffie Hellman is, uh, yeah, what if there's some sort of evil baby in between, or you know, some sort of malicious adversary? Um, you can take Diffie Hellman and kind of sit in between. If you have the ability to change and modify messages as they go through, you can kind of set yourself up as uh, as as the pretending to be the server to the client and to pretending to be the client to the server and then anything that uh, the client, they think they're talking to the server, they're actually talking to this mal malicious adversary we call uh, Mallory in the, uh, the crypto jargon, but Mallory here's a baby. And uh, so you can have this kind of evil baby sitting between listening. How do you do a key exchange if there's the potential of anybody changing these messages? And the answer is, public key cryptography, specifically digital signatures. This is, again, some sort of fancy math thing, but um, you can kind of think of it as uh, having three components, is you have a private key, a public key, and with the private key, you can create a signature. So um, conceptually, the private key is the stamp, and only you have it, and you can create these seals with the stamp, and if someone wants to ver verify um, that you actually did uh, seal this envelope with your stamp, they can just look and look, look at the logo. And so um, you can't reproduce this seal. It's sort of a lot more complex than, than this regular logo. It's, it's sort of mathematically strong. But um, this idea that you can take a private piece of information and uh, certify something as, yes, this is actually me who's seen it and I approve of this, uh, allows you to build up some pretty interesting constructions that allow you to trust the internet. So, um, certificates. This, this is kind of what a printout of a certificate would be uh, for if you're in kindergarten or something and get 
you know, cleaned up your toys the fastest. But um, there's there's an idea of a digital certificate, which um, we talk about a lot. And this is this is what you say TLS certificates. You hear about the certificate, the TLS pipeline, and um, certificates for Baidu and all these sort of things. What what it really is is just a couple different things together in a file. And this is like who you are, what websites you own, what dates the certificate is valid for, your public key for your website, and then it's usually digitally signed by someone else. So um, in the case of websites that, that we use, for example, we would this would be our certificate, and it is stamped and sealed with the certificate of a certificate authority, or in this case, it's kind of a chain of certificate authorities. So you can imagine um, this is Global Sign, or this is Komodo, and they, have, and this is sort of Cloudflare's website, and it says, "Oh, I'm Cloudflare.com," and it has a rubber stamp from Komodo that says, "Yes, this is actually Cloudflare.com's." public key. This is, this is who they are. And um, th this basic concept of a chain of certificates is what is the foundation for trust on the entire internet. And that's called the public key infrastructure. So there are tons and tons of these certificate authorities out there that are trusted by browsers and they can sort of rubber stamp certificates for any domain they want. And uh, it's, it's kind of a, like a long chain of trust that goes through, but let me just walk you through this real quick. So um, if you have, so all these browsers have these, these kind of certificates that belong to Komodo or Entrust or VeriSign or something like this. And they have like a whole list of like a hundred or so or several hundred certificates. And these are the ones that are implicitly trusted. These are the trust roots of the entire internet. And um, each one of these CA certificates are owned by a certificate authority, which is a company, most, most likely, and they can kind of mint certificate authority certificates underneath it, so intermediate certificates like, like I just showed. And these certificates, they have the private keys for, and they can sort of stamp your certificates for your websites. And so then every website will have its own private key and certificate, and this key exchange can be digitally signed using the private key of that website, of that certificate. So um, when you're doing the Dippy Hellman key exchange, you, if you rubber stamp it with your private key and give it a certificate, then the, the baby in the middle can't manipulate that because they can't reproduce that uh, signature. And so when the browser and the website sort of exchange information, the browser checks the signature against um, the website certificate, and then it checks to see that if that certificate has the right name, and that it's trusted by a CA, and it's sort of like this happy chain of like, one thing signs another thing, signs another thing, signs another thing, and if you trust everything all along, then it's all good. And that's, that's the basis of uh, trust on the internet. Um, we built up this diagram um, for what it means for like two services to talk to each other. And, uh, and use TLS. So uh, I don't know if you can follow this diagram. It's kind of, there's a lot of little pieces going along, but this is your Diffie-Hellman key exchange. And this signature right here says that it's, it's signed by the private key of, of this website. And that key, key share is signed by the private key of that website. And you can kind of follow the arrows all the way up to the trusted CAs. And, um, and then, then you're kind of done. Then you can say, okay, these session keys are really from the people that I expect them to be. Um, so if you're a website or if you're Cloudflare and you manage the SSL certificates, the TLS certificates for a number of websites, how does this work in practice? How do you practically get a certificate? Well, it starts with just creating a public key pair. This is just, you generate two numbers and, uh, and they, of, of the correct format and you keep them. And you can take the public key and put it into this object called a certificate signing request which pretty much looks like a certificate, except rather than being signed by a certificate authority, it's signed by your own private key. And this is, this is kind of like, hey, a proof I own this public key. And it's really, this is, this is me. And you, you give it to the certificate authority, and uh, then they need proof that your website is actually owned by you. So they give you this sort of, this proof, which is like a hash or some, some sort of secret data or, or public data, and if you can put it inside your DNS, or if you can put it inside HTTP in a meta tag, then that's proof that you own this website. 
and they say, okay, I have a CSR, so I know the public key, and I know this website is actually owned by who they say, who they, say they are, so let me sign a certificate for them. So they take the public key, create a certificate, send it back to you. And th this is what we do in an automated way. So um, when we're t getting certificates for customers, uh, we just pr automatically take, create a CSR in the CA, put the proof inside of our DNS infrastructure, and uh, then wait for them to uh, get through their queue and get to, get to us. So um, this is, that, that's, the, that's the mechanism. So um, on the other half of the story is browsers need to trust these certificate authorities and how does that happen? Well, this is, this is sort of like a long history from the beginning of the internet, but um, essentially each browser has a root program, which is, uh, a list of certificate authorities they trust. And they each have sort of criteria for how you can get your certificate authority into this root program. So Mozilla has one, Microsoft has one, Apple has one, um, and there are a couple others. But to get in, you have to be a certificate authority, you have to pass this audit, essentially. That's, that's what you have to do, this web trust audit, which takes a couple months and uh, requires some sort of restrictions on what your infrastructure can do, and you need to generate a private key for your certificate, and this is typically held in a hardware security module. Um, different browsers trust different certificate authorities, and this kind of causes a little bit of chaos. Um, we built, we compiled a list of which browsers so trust which certificate authorities, so if you go on GitHub under CFSSL trust, you can kind of check and see what the differences are between the different browser root stores. And um, some, just some basic common questions before I open this up. This is a short presentation. I thought it would be nice to have kind of a conversation after this uh, because there's a lot of deep dives we can make in many different directions. But um, question, can I create my own CA? So somebody asked me this yesterday. Uh, where is he, Taryn? Uh, he's like, I want to make my own CA. And you, you can do that. You can create your own CA, but without getting it into the browser trust store, it's not going to be trusted by a browser. Um, but you can use it for, say, if you have two services and you want them to talk to each other, and you can, you can use your own internal CA. This is something we do have at Cloudflare, is a CA for internal services. And uh, another question that has come up a lot is, what is SHA-1? Uh, or SHA-2, and we had a lot of discussion about this at the, at the beer meeting and uh, in the blog. But this is just a component of the digital signature algorithm. So, um, one of many components. Uh,